Right, hi everyone. We're going to carry on with uh, our adventure in darkest Africa now and uh, travel on to the second scenario. So just a few um, comments on the previous game where I didn't uh, actually get the rules wrong but I did omit a few things. So um, first thing to say though is that um, in that game both um, the characters uh, Mary Kingsley and the chieftain here whose name escapes me for the moment it's probably a good idea to refer to them by their names because it is meant to be you know building up their characters and so on so his name is Motto Wanfa now both of those were removed from the table um, so there's a possibility that their condition will you know their physical state will deteriorate uh, before the next scenario and, uh, and what you do is you roll a d6 for each of them if they fail then they go down um, a level of health and um, I've already made those dice rolls and both of them failed so they've gone down from being healthy now to being poorly um, that doesn't actually affect any of their characteristics in the next scenario if they go down to um, in agony or grievously wounded then um, their abilities are diminished in the um, in the game and then finally they can go on to being dead which is obviously uh, not good for them um, so that's the latest update is that Mary Kingsley and uh, gosh I've forgotten his name again already Motto Wanfa are both now poorly um, one of the one of the things that um, I did omit from the previous game, um, but looking back on it now, hasn't actually made any difference. Is that Mary Kingsley has the ability, an ability called barter, and that allows her to trade totem cards. Um, to replace losses from her group that take place due to melee now that might that could potentially have saved her life in the previous game except that you're only allowed to look to um, trade one figure and there was only one melee that took place and that was when she was on her own attacked by the warriors and there were actually two figures to be removed so it wouldn't luckily it wouldn't have uh, altered the outcome of the game <clears throat> um, so that poorly uh, status still holds up the other thing i forgot to do is that the reporter has an ability called telling a story so if he is still alive at the end of the game um, it can increase the victory points um, that the that side uh, obtained but again luckily that made no difference to the outcome because Mary Kingsley's side won easily so it wouldn't have altered the outcome of the game and another thing that um, I hadn't spotted um, it struck me as kind of odd that um, the Jewers um, side had a sacred warrior but Mary Kingsley's side didn't have an auxiliary of any kind and a bearer is quite useful and when I look back they were in fact right from the outset they were entitled to a bearer so um, I'm going to include that from now on um, it is, as I say there is a discrepancy in the points value uh, between the two sides anyway and this this adds to the points value of Mary's side, uh, making that discrepancy even greater. So it's a little bit odd, but um, the bearer is going to be important now, um, traveling from one scenario to the other. So we've definitely got to include him in Mary's side from now on. Um, another thing, the next thing to tell you then is that um, there is 
the the supplement Mungo Marlobi does have a number of um, additional rules. Um, they don't have to be played, but they do kind of enhance the uh, additional rules that they strongly recommend that you follow. Um, and one of them is experience. So um, that allows you to, um, not for the Jewer, for Mary Kingsley, but for any other characters involved, does allow you to kind of boost their skills as they gain experience. Um, so I definitely want to want to do that. Now, what I've decided to do is if a character was eliminated or removed from the table in the scenario, then um, is that character is going to miss out on uh, being able to enhance his experience. So the chieftain, Mutuf Wanfa, I think his name was, um, he was removed. So definitely not going to do it for that. But I will do for all the other characters. You don't do it as a say for Jew or for Mary Kingsley. But we'll start with the talking drum character here. Um, and his name was Coover. Um, and what you do, um, the winner rolls a d10, the loser rolls a d6. So he was on the losing side. So we're going to roll a d6. Oh, and I roll a 6. OK, so it says choose one of your characters. He acquires one D6 in a zero value characteristic of your choice. So that's quite handy for him because uh, the talking drum um, only has a D6 bravery. So we can now give him either a D6 in shooting or in combat. So I think I'm going to give him a D6 in combat right now the winning side roll a d10 i believe yep so they've rolled a nine Right, so they're all a nice. So it says choose one of your groups with at least one D6 characteristic. Any one D6 characteristic becomes D8. So that's not going to in fact affect um, any of these characters, but it will do one of the groups in Mary's um, column. So who should we go for? I haven't got the figures out in front of me so you just have to imagine this um right so one d6 characteristic becomes a d8 so as the ascaris not the ascaris the young warriors that the reporter was with um performed quite well I think I'm going to put their combat value up from D6 to D8 um, as a reflection of how well they did in that previous scenario. So that is the experience over with. Now, next thing we have to do is travel on to the next uh, adventure. And the winner which is Mary Kingsley, can choose one of three routes. Now they take um, a varying amount of time, but the, uh, remember that the object of the campaign is to get to um, Mount Cameroon as rapidly as possible and ascend it. So for this... Um, for this particular uh, choice, I'm going to take the swiftest route, which is over swift water. And that does come with added risks and hazards. So what we're going to do is we roll a dice. 1d6. And if it's a success, 
the journey takes two months if it doesn't it takes three months so it's a success it takes two months then because we now have the bearer um, if we can get a success on another d6 it reduces that length of journey down to one month yes we did we got a five so on the journey length all we have to do is add another month to the uh, journey length so far okay now uh, Then next up, we have to roll a d8 against a table. So we rolled a two. So it says that this is a misfortune. Cannibals have attacked your camp. They have carried off one of your auxiliaries, striking him off your travel log. And that means, unfortunately, that the bearer has only just been introduced to the campaign has been killed oh dear um right so the cannibal the cannibals have eaten the bearer virtually as soon as he's arrived on the on the tabletop at least he got a month he t at least he took a month off the journey time before he died okay now um next up there are three potential routes so it's up to a jeweler now to choose one of the other two so I think because there is either through the thriving jungle or from village to village and it does say that through the thriving jungle is not the most propitious place for communicating with the spirits which is um, the Jew is kind of bag, so I'm going to go from village to village, um, which is time consuming, but it may give the Jew some more rewards. Um, before we do that, though, um, we have to roll a d6 for a Jew. No, we don't. We have to roll a d8. And a success. No, it's a failure. Um, three boxes. It's a failure. So we have three boxes on the spiritual link track. Struck off. Ah, oh, right. So if you remember on that previous campaign sheet, um, we're going to strike off the three spiritual links rituals that a Jew already has. And these he got for successes in casting rituals in the previous scenario. Um, so they are all going to go, I'm afraid, for the time being. He's going to have to build that back up again. Um, not good he's not having a good campaign so far the jeweler right then we rolled a d8 again we rolled an eight this time which is better um you run across an old this is random events now you run across an old acquaintance choose one character from the port luanda table or the council of elders table for a jeweler and add him to your travel log so got a choice now so another character is going to join uh, a Jewer's quest um, So, 
I'm just going to pause for a minute because this choice could be quite important. Right, after a little bit of cogitation I decided to go for the Pygmy King whose name is Hermago. So we'll tick him off there. Oh no, I won't tick him off there, that means he's poorly. <laughs> Take him off here, and he now joins the um, retinue of a Jewer's side. And if he's in the game, um, any pygmies in play, so I've got the pygmy archers at the moment, have a bravery of d10, so that could be quite handy. Um, right, so um, I think. That is everything we need to do. So, um, much more successful journey for a Jew than for Mary, who's lost her bearer, but a Jew has gained a pygmy king. Yeah, so now we're on to the second scenario, which is called the search for deeper knowledge. Okay, here we are then at scenario two, the search for knowledge. And this scenario involves um, seeking out three teachers who are in three huts along the center line of the table. Um, there's a witch doctor in the witch doctor's hut um, and there is a guide and a wise man um, I think that one is the wise man um, the two sides come on from opposite ends so there is Mary's group there Mary is still alive. Um, she was sort of killed in the previous episode, but um, basically a figure's removed from the table. Um, they do come back. They just have to uh, uh, roll against a, a test. And if they fail, they deteriorate in health. So she is now poorly. This is a Jewers group here. Um, they've now picked up the Pygmy King and you're only allowed three characters um, in this campaign each time. So I've left off the Chieftain and the Pygmy King is there with his Pygmy Archers. And there are, you have to have six pieces of dangerous terrain. So I have made um, the largest of the Termite Hills an area of high dangerous terrain as well. And that is because each um, piece of dangerous terrain has a, to a hidden concealed token in it. Four of them are objects that can be picked up and two of them are going to be mishaps. And then there's just the odd bit of rock um, as blocking terrain. Um, and it's played on Savannah again. And in this scenario, <clears throat> um, you have wild animals, but they are hyenas. And if they haven't been drawn from the bag by the fourth turn, they do come on automatically. So we should see some uh, wild actions, uh, wild animals in action in this scenario as well. So I've drawn the cards. Um, both sides are now equal in terms of star points, so Mary's side don't get an extra uh, totem card. Um, the cards she drew at random weren't particularly good, so she changed one and still hasn't got particularly useful. What you really need at the first go is a lot of movement, which hasn't got that. Um, so she swapped one over, so she didn't get an additional um, totem card whereas um, a Jewer was happy with his 
three cards so he picked up an additional um, totem card and he's also got his sorcerer's guard card and he gets the initiative because he lost the last game so that's the setup and we're all set to go right we're off then turn one um, Mary Kingsley has played this card here um, which has a higher priority number than a Dewar's card uh, so she gets to go first and the first thing that we've done is um, the Kiran Gosi uh, Kuva and his group of Ascaris have um, moved um, with the additional movement rate that he's allowed into the dangerous terrain and they've turned over the first token now that triggers quite a lot of um, events the first one is that because he's moved the additional um, measurement has to take a stress token out of the bag and he has drawn a terror stress token um, the next thing is that he is crossed into dangerous terrain so he has to roll on the dangerous terrain table um, so you roll a d10 so I'll show you the dice roll here and he's rolled a six so this is Savannah again so we roll again and six and four um, results in a most curious witch doctor approaches you brandishing a leopard mash leopard mask beg pardon um, he proclaims that the spirits he controls can lead you safely through the dangers ahead you may change the order of the totem cards at the top of your draw deck. Choose between 1d6, 1d8 or 1d10. If you roll a success and choose a, d chose a d6, you can freely change the order of your next four totem cards. If you chose a d8, you can do the same, but with only the next three totem cards. A d10 gives you the same opportunity with the next two cards right um so i'm gonna say d6 then so let's roll a d6 see if we get a success no we get a failure so um not gonna be able to make use of that and then finally um because he's turned over a number five that is actually a mishap rather than a find. So he has to roll on <coughs> uh, what's called a um, cursed table, which is part of the scenario. Um, it's not part of the rule book. So we rolled a d6 and we rolled a three. And that was it in make a roll on the Savannah dangerous table terrain and apply the result to your group. So we're going to do another one of those um, D10 twice rolls like we did a moment ago. So one um, is actually, we don't have to roll anything more because one is all is well, no effect. So that is the end of... Uh, that little incident there apart from the disappointment of not finding a discovery came out of that quite well okay in the remaining part of uh, that cards activation um, Mary's group put a terror influence on the scouts who um, actually failed so they picked up a token but then in their play of their cards they were actually able to remove that stress token using this card here sorry for some reason out of focus um, and then uh, played four activation movements 
um, one of which involved uh, the pygmies going into this dangerous terrain here. Um, they picked up a stress token as a result of uh, the, on the dangerous terrain table. <clears throat> um, the uh, group of warriors with Kuva, the talking drum there, um, activated the talking drum's ability to move a fifth group and thereby picked up a stress token and um, the Juva, the Witch Doctor, also played his sorcery card and failed on that, so um, no result of having played the forgery card. Um, so that's the end of phase one of turn one. So in phase two, um, Mary played this card, which um, has a shooting activation on it, which is of no use at the moment, nothing's in range. So simply use this and successfully um, rallied off the stress token that was on there. And by the way, in the previous scenario and just now, I forgot that once you reach a discovery, you're entitled to turn over a totem card. So I've turned over an additional totem card for Mary now. So she's now got two totem cards there. And then, um, on the Jewish side, they had a lot more success. The scouts there reached that uh, discovery, which turned out to be sacred stones. And um, they played, that was using this two motivations, two activations there. So the other group I moved were the Bunduki, who were on their way around this way, hoping to get to uh, that hut there. And um, for turning up that card, they turned over a really useful totem card, which is two movement activations. And that was the end of their turn. So now we're on to uh, phase three. Right, lots happening in the third phase of turn one. Um, the Jew one went first and moved quite a lot of his uh, groups as a result of using these cards and also was able to get rid of a few stress tokens. Um, so uh, turned over two more discoveries which both turned out to be positive so he's now got magical plants there and uh, that one Forget, forget what that was, um, but it's it's one to four, so it's a discovery. Um, then it was Mary's turn, and uh, sort of a bit mixed uh, fortune really, because uh, she only had uh, this card to, pl to play, which was three um, influences, because she didn't have anything to rally off herself. So, um, managed to um, inflict stress tokens on the scouts there, which is really no use because it was a panic one, which is going to come off straight away as it's the end of turn one. And again, the same there, another panic token. Um, and I think there was one on, yeah, the Bundukis here took a melee stress token which is more use but the interesting thing here was that um, prior to taking out the panic token the uh, scouts actually revealed the wild animals so unlike last game the wild animals are in play from turn one um, and they get to choose uh, the dangerous terrain that the hyenas are put into so they have picked this very inconvenient for Mary, dangerous terrain here. And that's now, they are now in the way of uh, this group of young warriors with the reporter there from getting to that token to see what it is. Um, it's a, there's a 50-50 chance it's not gonna be a discovery anyway, but a mishap. Um, but anyway, we're now at the end of, um, the action phase 
third action phase of turn one and at the end of each action phase what you do is you measure to see if there are any groups within M of the hyenas and there obviously are there so you move the hyenas up to that group and because there are three of them they are going to roll a d10 and it's a success so the young warriors only get to roll a d6 to try and counter that so they need a five or six otherwise they're going to lose a figure oh and they're okay they rolled a six so they got away with that this is uh, end of phase one of turn two um, the scouts have reached the witch doctor's hut um, but in order to search for the witch doctor they need to use the plunder rule and because they uh, picked up the pace to get there, moved at sort of double movement um, they're not allowed to do that this turn but they can start trying to search for the witch doctor um, in the next turn and the other thing the card allowed them to do was to rally off um, a stress token which they failed to do as you can see and um, the Jewer also failed he played his sorcery card but failed the ritual so that was the end of their turn over here um, Mary's group um, played this card um, they moved with that, so Mary's group itself had moved a little bit closer to this dangerous terrain. And the shooting, you're only allowed to, you can't melee hyenas, you're only allowed to shoot at them. So they attempted to shoot, throw spears at the hyenas and failed. And then in the hyenas attack at the end of the phase, um, they killed one of the young warriors um, so hyenas came off best in that encounter and now we're on to phase two of turn two okay phase two of turn two uh mary kingsley pay, played this card so four groups have moved further forward um, and this one as you can see moved into the dangerous terrain um they i think yeah they lost a totem card um as a result of going into the dangerous terrain and then turned over um the object there and discovered it was a mishap um you know what i forgot to, i think they turned they t they lost the totem card as a result of turning that up so let's just I didn't roll on the dangerous terrain table, so let's just do that now. So two, they'll be all right. One, two, and three is no problem. Um, and the hyenas uh, failed to kill anyone this turn. So what we so inevitably now this that means that this is the other discovery. It's the only token that hasn't been turned up. So. Um, that is going to be valuable to reach. So I think, um, well, either either up to this group or that probably that group, the the Rugga Rugga, to go and pick up that other discovery token. Um, these are scary here. Pick, uh, they use the uh, Kiringoz's ability, but meant they picked up a stress token, which unfortunately is a movement stress token but they are pretty close to this hut probably get there before um these bundaki <clears throat> um in turn on this side uh part of this card wasn't any use because it was a shooting activation and they're not within range of anything but they did move and they used their movement um to plunder the witch doctor's hut and actually rolled a success so the witch doctor is now there with them um, so he is an independent character but he will be 
moving around with them unless they um, lose a melee or something like that. Okay, uh, that was the end of phase two, turn two. Now we're on to phase three, turn two. So not much joy for the uh, forest tribes in that turn. Um, they could, couldn't have, any, they didn't have anything to shoot at, and they failed with this test to rally off the only, well, one of the stress markers that they have on the uh, Bunduki here. So that was the end of their phase. Whereas um, Mary Kingsley's group did a lot of movement. They played this card and this totem card. Um, so they were able to reach that discovery. Turn that one up. Again, I've forgotten to look up what it is, but it will be valued. Um, <coughs> these three groups here also moved. So these are within... Uh, coming within range of attacking one another now. So the, the idea would be that uh, if they can win in melee, then the Witch Doctor will join them. And uh, this group here, even though they can't pick up the pace with that stress token, they are very close to this hut. Uh, over here though, things didn't go quite so well. Um, they didn't have a shooting activation, so they just had to uh, hope that the hyenas didn't uh, roll a success and unfortunately they did and the um, young warriors rolled a fail so another one has been uh, savaged by the hyenas. I'm playing it as well, I'm not quite sure about the rules but um, as there's a character there I am rolling for the terrifying death roll. Um, I don't think there would be any reason why um, you know, the uh, reporter couldn't be one of the ones randomly killed, um, but he is surviving. But they've now lost two figures there. So now we're on to turn three. Right, so as you can see, um, Mary's group with the soldiers there is now in possession of the Witch Doctor and the Discovery. And that is because they melleeed with the group of scouts. Um, even though Mary Kingsley is obliged to use a pacifist um, ability, which resulted in any one figure from each side fighting one another, um, both sides threw lots of additional dice rolls in, which meant that the um, Mary's group won um, and inflicted two casualties on the, on the scouts and um, Hence, there's only one figure left, but both sides had to pick up stress tokens, and Mary's group there has ended up with a panic token. Um, so we'll have to rally that off before they can do anything else this turn. Um, the Jewers group has moved a lot of, or a column has moved a lot of groups up. Uh, there's another one there. And he also, uh, there's a Jew in there, I haven't seen much of him in this game. Um, he also successfully performed a ritual which gave him a totem card. Um, and he's, I'm going to keep score of that as, as uh, I learned from the last scenario because that will affect his campaign status. Um, over this side, um, apart from the movement to attack, um, I think Mary's side managed, oh no, they inflicted, yeah, that's right, they inflicted a stress token on the opposite side because it's black, you're allowed to be aggressive with it. And then unfortunately for um, the young, young warriors and the reporter there, um, the hyenas managed to savage another warrior to death. So um, I think... It might be time to escape from that, try and get as far away from possible as the hyenas so that they're not within attack distance, I don't know. Anyway, on to phase two of turn three. Right, in this phase, a Jewer um, has 
definitely come out on top. Um, played three shooting and one additional action. And uh, the uh, pygmy <coughs> archers have absolutely obliterated this group. Um, this is the problem with Mary's ability, I'm finding, that um, in melee, because of her pacifist abilities and bartering abilities, she's able to absorb a lot more, uh, reduce the level of the melee and then absorb a lot more casualties, but um, from shooting, really vulnerable. And she's now left on her own, um, still in possession of the Witch Doctor and the Discovery. But one more phase of this turn to go and a panic uh, token on her. And, um, you know, unable to move. So, uh, luckily for her, the next card that you was going to play isn't a shooting one. Otherwise, she'd probably be wiped out. Um, both sides now have managed to reach this hut but neither have been able to plunder it yet to see if they can acquire the uh, I think it's the wise man that's in that one and over here um, the reporters have moved away from the hyenas meaning that they were closer to the you know the hyenas were closer to the rugger rugger um, so they turned around and um, attacked the Rugger Rugger and have killed one of them already. Um, so they're going to have to try and use a shooting ability to try and kill off some hyenas before uh, much further. And the only other thing that happened was that the adventurers have got a little bit closer into the action. Um, so should maybe be able to help. Mary out there. So now we're on to phase three, turn three. Okay, so this is the situation at the end of turn three then. Um, this panic token will now come off, but um, Mary needs to get out of there really with her uh, trophies and her accompanying witch doctor. Um, the Warriors here managed to rally off a stress token, um, but I think that was the only success that the forest tribes had. And uh, over this side, um, they failed to rally that stress token off, but over here, the Rugga Rugga did manage to shoot and kill one of the hyenas now, so there is now a loot token there um, that counts as a um, a pelt if it can be picked up so it will add to the victory points and to the overall campaign tally but in return um, when it came to attack the um, hyenas managed to kill off another one of the rugga rugga so it's kind of even even stevens there at the moment these hyena really are quite uh, vicious Anyway, so now we're on to turn four. So as I'm playing the uh, Confusion Ball, as it's a solo game, um, the Jewers group have been really unlucky because they really now want to uh, get some shooting activations and the three cards they've got, even with the uh, re-allocation, uh, didn't uh, give them any shooting activations at all. So um, the best I could think of doing was to try and put a uh, try and put a bravery uh, an influence on Mary Kingsley, so that she got a panic uh, token and therefore wasn't able to move, and it sort of half moved, half worked because I managed to put a movement. Uh, stress token on her but that just reduced the amount she was able to move so she has been able to she's probably out of range of those um pygmy bows now have to measure it but uh she's probably got out of range of those in this turn and uh the other thing that the um forest tribe been able to do is reach that hut but not plunder it yet over here they did attempt to plunder this hut um, 
but just didn't find the the uh, wise man just turned up another totem card and I uh, think that was the extent of their move um, over here uh, Mary used this to move rallied the um, movement stress token off of the Ascari there with the Kuringozi <clears throat> and then used an action card to attempt to shoot another hyena failed but um, then the hyenas failed to um, devour any more of the rugger rugger so it's still evenly balanced there um, and that was the end of the first phase of turn th four so the uh, young warriors there have managed to um, oblige the guide to come out of the hut and follow them there so they're now in possession of the guide um, these adventurers here have shot up the pygmy archers so there's just one left in that half group there of three um, but the uh, discovery isn't really in danger because if he is if he's forced to drop it leave the table then the warriors there are going to be closest to picking it up over here um, neither side has been able to um, find the final teacher the wise man um, Mary's moved back a little bit more into safety the uh, young warriors with the reporter here have moved a bit closer to these hyenas so that they can start to throw spears at them and the Ruga Ruga have been unable to shoot another hyena <coughs> excuse me but the hyenas equally haven't been able to uh, injure any more Ruga Ruga so that was uh, the second phase of turn four now we're on to the final phase of turn four End of turn four, one more hyena has been shot dead, but equally one more um, rugger rugger has been savaged. So um, again, equal match there. Um, they've also got a stress token on them now because of an influence that was played on them. And uh, Mary is a little bit further back now, so pretty safe in that area of the board for the time being um, yeah neither yeah neither of these two groups they both tried to rally off their stress markers and failed uh, and that was virtually everything that happened in that turn i think so now we're on to turn five in the first phase of turn five then, um, just run you across the board rather than do it in order. So over this end, um, despite frantic spear throwing and shooting at the hyena, it's still alive, but it failed to uh, inflict any more injury on the uh, rugger rugger. So no, <coughs> no change there, um, up this end. The adventurers uh, wiped. There they are. The adventurers wiped out the uh, final pygmy, who uh, therefore uh, lost the token. But those warriors have moved up and picked it up. And uh, the only other disaster was that uh, the jeweler is doing really badly at um, trying to uh, successfully perform any rituals this this game. So far he's only managed one success, but he uh, played his sorcery card and in addition used up two totem cards giving him four dice of different values to roll and didn't get a single success. So uh, that was a real setback really. Um, and that was, that was it really for that phase. Okay, so in phase two of turn five, uh, these warriors here use the extended range totem card in order to throw spears at the adventurers uh, 
who uh, took one casualty, but they have the reckless ability. So instead of um, removing a figure, they drew two stress tokens, which is why they now have two stress tokens on them there. Um, that was the only success that the forest tribes had in that turn. Um, over here, um, the final hyena was shot dead um, meaning that there are now three loot tokens there to be picked up. So I just had to refresh my memory on the walls um, because uh, I was um, I could remember that when a gorilla was killed it was a <coughs> excuse me a, a bulky loot token but these are just loot tokens so you can have numerous um, loot tokens in your possession. A bulky loot token acts as a movement stress um, token. So they are, they are well within reach of it, any of these uh, figures, so that will add to the victory points at the end of the end of the game. And um, now we are on to, oh that means as well that the wild animal token is back in the bag, so they could emerge again, not much time, but they could emerge again. And now we're on to phase three of turn five. So that was a very uh, short phase because not much happened. Um, the forest tribes only had a shooting activation card and nothing is within range of them. So they weren't able to actually do anything this turn. The um, white men expedition had two movements. With the first one, they tried to plunder this hut, see if they could find the wise man and failed and over here uh, they moved up and picked up the three the Rugga Rugga picked up the three loot tokens um, important to do that because this could be the end of the game now um, because it's turn six and at the start of each phase of turn six you roll a d8 and a, f and a Success means the game is over immediately. So five or more and the game has ended. It's two, so the, uh, there we go, it's two. So the uh, game will go on at least one more phase. So at the end of phase one of turn six, um, forest tribes have moved a lot closer with four of their groups. Um, rallied off a few stress tokens and uh, that was about it whereas the uh, white men's expedition managed to rally off one stress token there and uh, not much else as far as I can remember yeah I think I think that was just about everything that they managed to do. But the good news for Ajawa, Ajua was that he did manage to pass another ritual test. So he's got one more ritual success to tally up, um, giving him another totem card. And uh, yeah, now at the end of this, or the beginning of the next action phase, phase two of turn six, we've got to roll a d8 again. Put it in the tray, and it's a failure, so it goes on to phase two of turn six. Okay, so in phase two of turn six, uh, the adventurers uh, were dismal that they uh, failed to hit anything with their rifles and then were completely eradicated by uh, the poisoned arrows of the pygmy archers who got two automatic kills and one kill that could have been saved but wasn't. So all three of them were wiped out. And uh, I didn't think it was worth using the Reckless to try and save one of them at least because um, th these warriors here were about to charge down on them as well. So I took the adventurers off the table. And uh, now <laughs> the... Um, Forest tribes are really pushing forward, so they've got this group forward here and this one um, by using the talking drum there, which did mean that they drew another movement um, 
stress token and therefore won't be able to move until they get rid of those, one of those two at least. But uh, look how in peril Mary Kingsley is again. And um, the, this group here would uh, use their shortcut ability to get as far back as possible. So now Mary Kings is at the front of the column again and in peril. So it all comes down really to whether this is the end of the game or not, or whether there's going to be one more phase. So on a 5 plus, on a D8, the game ends now. Yeah, it does. It's saved in the nick of time. The game ends now. So I'm going to tot up the uh, victory points and so on next. Right then, uh, time to sum up all the uh, victory points and so on and uh, assess the uh, progression that the various characters have made. So I've got the principal characters who took part in the game out here for uh, review. The Pygmy King, the Jewer, uh, Kiva, the Talking Drum, Jameson, John Joshua Jameson, the reporter, Mary Kingsley and uh, Kiva, the Kirandosi. Sorry, that is Kuva, not Kiva talking drum. Okay so um, the overall game was won by Mary's side, probably no surprise to you there again. Um, that that uh, result was that you get four victory points for each teacher accompanying one of the groups. So the Jewer had one teacher and uh, Mary had two. So so far Mary's on eight points, the Jewer on four. Um, then you get four victory points for each discovery marker that uh, your side was carrying. Both were carrying two so they both get eight points each for that. Um, but then the loot tokens which um, the Rugga Rugga picked up on Mary's side um, there were three of those and you roll three d6 for each token and every success gives you another victory point and I've done that roll already and got an additional four victory points for Mary so that's pushed her well ahead so far to 20 points against 12 but then on top of that I remembered this time that the reporter has the ability telling a story and for that you get one d6 roll for each three victory points you had so far so in other words 20 divided by 3 is 6, so he rolled another 6 d6 and scored one success, giving him or giving the side an additional victory point. So they ended up with 21 victory points against 12. So Mary won the second adventure, so we can um, circle that on her log. So, so far, that's given her four uh, points towards the campaign. Um, now in terms of the campaign res rewards, um, you are allowed to select a domain of knowledge of your own choice um, for each of the teachers that you possess up to the, a total of two. So Mary had um, two teachers on her side at the end, so we're just going to I'm not sure what uh, the value of you know each of these domains of knowledge is, so we're just going to circle two. So she now she's got Africa uh, African customs from her previous game, and she's now got bartering and cartography as well, and that's all going to help her in the final climb up Mount Cameroon. Um, the Jewer. Uh, can tick off one, so he's going to just go for the first one, which is fetishes. Um, now, in terms of uh, discoveries, both had two each side. Um, that depends on the number of the token that they held. So, a Jewer at the end was holding magical plants, um, so he's got a second magical plants and that's going to allow him a talent because he's now got two of um, cancel only once per adventure all the effects of a dangerous terrain table roll so we'll have to remember that for the next 
game when one of his group enter dangerous terrain and he's also got ritual objects so we can put a cross there um, Mary on the other side had two discoveries one of which was fauna and the other was geology so she hasn't got two of anything yet um, but the broader you can make these finds the more talents you obtain the further along you go that way the more points you score um, but it's just as important to have a broad collection so that you have a, a wide um, choice of talents and then the only other thing we've got to remember to the end of this game is the experience rule um, so I'm going to play that oh um, yeah sorry before I forget as well um, the Jew has successfully performed two rituals during that game so we can tick off two there so if you remember at the beginning of the game he lost three so now he's lost three but gained two so he's now on two there so it's quite a long way he's got to get to six before he even begins to score points there um, yeah and then there was the experience so um, at the end of the adventure the winner rolls a d10 so Mary has rolled nine and um, that allows her to choose one of the groups with at least one d6 characteristic and any one d6 characteristic becomes d8 so in her groups in her column um, she's already been able to bump the combat of the young warriors up to eight from six so I wonder if it's worth bumping up their shooting ability as well I think I will I'm going to put the shooting ability of the young warriors up from six to eight so they are now quite a strong group because uh, they've got shooting of eight d d8 combat of d8 and bravery of d6 and then um, that's the limit on what that group can do incidentally I just read any given character or group may benefit at most from two roles so they benefited from two roles now so we'll have to remember that and then uh, the loser rolls a d6 and he's rolled six and that is choose one of your characters he acquires d6 in a zero value characteristic of your choice um, now if I remember correctly didn't the talking drama I think the talking dramas equally benefited from a role last turn um, but I think yeah it's a choice between either the talking drum or the pygmy king's shooting abilities because they're both zero so I think I'm going to put the talking drum's shooting ability up to d6 as well yeah and again equally that's the last time he can benefit from such a role and that is the end of the game I'll do the uh, traveling to the next scenario as the uh, preamble to the next game so thanks for watching again and join you on the next stage of this adventure in darkest Africa